Hi, this is Catherine Rosen with Board Game Geek. I'm joined here with Ted Elsbach from Bezier Games, and he's here to talk about Maglev Metro. So, Ted, please tell me about the game. All right. Well, thank you. Um, I'm super excited to be showing this off. Uh, this is, you know, I've loved train games and pick up deliver games for a long time. Um, one of the, the first, one of the very first things that I ever published was Age of Steam expansion maps, and we did a whole bunch of those uh, back in the the late 2000s. And uh, so I've loved train games, and to be able to design a train game and work with it and 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 publish it, I'm super excited. And this is certainly not a train game; it's a subway game. There's a big difference, but it's still super super fun. So it is pick up and deliver. Uh, there is some really cool tech tree going on here. Um, a little bit of set collection. And um, it's just kind of unlike anything else. And we were able to use some amazing, amazing components here. I hope that the video is going to be able to pick some of that up as well here with the, the, the cool trains and the recess boards that we have and, and some of the other things. Um, so um, I think we could probably just jump. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that train. That's really nice. See, the problem is once you pick it up, you don't want to put it down because it uh, feels so nice. It's it's half metal and half plastic. The, the top part on there, the translucent um, colored part is plastic. And the bottom part is actually metal, so it's weighted. And yeah, so I shouldn't have said that because now Lincoln's going to be like, oh, yeah, this is nice. I'll just put this one aside and play with it while while you guys are talking. Um, it'll be very, very disgusting. That is so cool. Um, I but just, I think I we can actually just jump in to a game right away. I can show you how to play. It's probably the easiest thing to do. Um, so um, the way it starts is uh, the basic premise behind here is we're going and we're replacing all the existing subways around the world with new maglev technology. Of course, maglev stands for magnetic levitation, and uh, it's technology that's it's a lot faster, um, it's a lot quieter, and um, it has the ability to to basically you know totally revitalize both regular trains as well as even smaller uh, in city subways. And uh, you don't see it a lot in the, the real world right now, although Berlin actually did have a, the very first um, maglev-based metro back in the 80s. And uh, they were using it to bridge between the part where East Berlin and West Berlin, when they were, when they were cut apart in the late 80s, they actually came up with a, a, a train line that was, went for a few stations that was maglev-based um, to make up for where, they, where it was for going across the river over to East Berlin, and they couldn't do that. And uh, it was in operation for about three years. And then um, uh, it was a good end to the story in that East Berlin and West Berlin joined back together to become Berlin. That was great. Wall fell. Everyone's happy about that. The sad news, though, is that they didn't need that particular line anymore, that maglev line that they had made. And so they no longer have maglev there, even though uh, they had spent a lot of money to, to you know, go forward with that technology. So it's really interesting. Um, so because of that, that's why you see it right here. We've got one of the maps that are included with the box is Berlin. The other side of this is Manhattan. Um, and uh, so we're going to play on the Berlin side right now. The way the game starts is each player it has a train, has one of the, the little trains. I've got one here because, like I said, it's kind of hard to put down once you pick it up. So I just keep my hand the whole time. Um, and uh, <laughs> you're going to start on one of those stations in the center there. There are three different stations, and I can see my screen's pretty small here, uh, or at least the, the screen I'm, I'm looking at up there. Oh, there, I can see it a little better now. Um, there should be um, a couple of the passengers on each of those um, starting stations. It's a little hard to tell. Um, there we go. Yep, yeah, there are. Fantastic. Uh, so we have it set up for more players right now, but that's fine. We'll just keep it like that. And um, that's the, the basic setup. You're going to, to start out, each of us are going to pick one of these stations to start on. So I'll pick, I'll go first. I'll pick the one that Lincoln picked up there. Um, so that lab, that, that a copper lab. So go ahead and put my train there, whatever color you pick. It's fine, I'll be red, purple, green, green. Okay, I'm green, good, green. Um, and then when I put that down, I also pick up one of those passengers there. Now those passengers, you'll notice they're gold, silver, and copper. And those are actually robot passengers. And those robot passengers are gonna help uh, enhance our train line throughout the game. So the more of those we have, the better our train line will be. So for right now, because it's the very first turn, I'm just going to take that and I'm going to put it uh, next to my player board. This is our initial just uh, setup. There we go. And then, Catherine, if you want to do, you can pick any one of those three stations, even the one I'm on, if you'd like to, and choose one of those oh. uh, passengers to pick up and as well. I'll go for gold. Why not? Okay, no. Lincoln chose for me. <laughs> yes, that was nice. It was, it's, Lincoln's like, I'll do this. <laughs> Clearly, you don't know what you're All doing. Right. 
Lincoln, the Lincoln makes the choices, all right. All right. Uh, then the first thing we do on our turn, and I don't know if the camera can do this, but you can zoom in a little bit on that one, the, the player board and the blue player board, since we're using that for me, um, that that particular player board is kind of your tech tree. And all those different spots there where you see passenger shapes um, is where you can put robots and also you can put what we call commuters, which are the pink and lilac and coral and purple um, colored passengers. All the, the metallic ones are the robots, the other ones are your passengers. The passengers get you victory points, the robots basically enhance your capabilities for the most part. So when we start, we started with one of each of the, th of the three robot colors and also the one that I picked up from the station. I can start and place them anywhere I want to. Um, to make things easy, let's place uh, one of them um, up in the track, on the left side of track there in the number two, the very top. And it doesn't matter what color it is. Nope, that would be, that would be to the, in the center column. There we go, there, there it is. It fits real nicely in that little spot there. Um, let's do the next one in capacity on the left of capacity. I don't know if you have any that aren't that you have left over Lincoln from the bag. Okay. And then um, we'll do another one. If you have a gold one, we're going to put it down in where it says build station. Right. Uh, there it is. Perfect. And we have one more because we picked one up at the station. So you start with three and I'll let Lincoln put that any place he wants to. So um, he's going to put it in pickup. Okay. Excellent choice. Great. Uh, then my first turn, I get two actions. You'll notice on the player board, it says there are actions one and two. You've got little uh, passenger meeples that are there. You always start the game with two actions, but you can unlock more. Right below there, there's a section called extra actions. If I fill in any one of those rows with additional passengers, I get an extra action each turn. So uh, for now, we're just going to have two actions. And for those two actions, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to build some track. And to build track, I already had a, a meeple in there that lets me build two track units or two pieces of track in one action. I'm going to build track between that copper and the silver station. So basically between the two stations where we are. So piece of straight track tile. You can take the blue track tile right there. Since I'm blue. And place it right there. Perfect. That's one of my two. My other one I'm going to take and go from that place where my train is and go to the lower right to that, that station that doesn't actually have uh, any anything there. Just a couple pieces. Perfect. There we go. All right, that's one action. Uh, my second action is to build a station down there where I've connected to. I've connected to an empty area. I'm going to build a station there. Initially, you can build any one of those three base station colors, so silver, gold, or copper. Eventually, you'll be able to unlock those other colors to build them. But Lincoln, you go ahead and pick any one of those colors. doesn't matter which one, whatever you think looks nicest for now. And that the meeple, the passenger that was on there, goes onto my player board. So put that on my player board. And again, I'll let you pick whatever spot you think is the appropriate one for that. And ah, we want extra actions, very smart. Um, because there were some silver passengers, uh, silver robots on that spot, when you put the thing there, we're actually gonna take those robots and put them back in the bag. The bag is gonna be kind of a repository of additional passengers. Now the goal of this game is eventually going to be setting up this great network where I can deliver actual commuters. So actual real life people to different destinations that where the, the color matches. So pink commuters go to the pink stations, lilac ones go to the lilac stations, et cetera. And, uh, but in order to do that, I've got to set up this network and kind of unlock those colors first. So I've done that. Those are my two actions. I built a station and those two pieces of track. So now Catherine, it's your turn. You can do something similar. You can also choose an action like pick up um, all those actions down the middle of the player board. Again, a little hard to see right now because it's small, um, but you can do things like pick up passengers. You can build more track if you'd like to. Um, all sorts of things like track. But, but for your first start, you have to place your um, robots in uh, different places there to unlock them. You can yes. let Lincoln do that randomly, or you can Lincoln something. Lincoln uh, can choose what he wants to do there. I'll give him uh, okay. full power. Oh, he's going to give you a third action right away. So he's going to unlock all that. Ooh. That'd be crazy. Okay, good. All right. Well, it looks like he gave you two in the track thing. The so the two in track that would let, allow you to build two pieces of track like I did, or if you want to cross that river, it's going to require two to put one piece of track on the river. So that's that river going across the uh, Berlin there. It costs you two track units to build across that. So if you'd want to, you could go up to that gold station with a piece of track and that would be one of your actions. That sounds perfect. Let's do that, Lincoln. And I just have to comment on these beautiful clear pieces. You can see the board through the, the track pieces, which is really nice. 
Yes. And to be able to see other people's tracks through there, because I can play a track in the exact same spot that you have. So we can share um, those, those hexes. We don't say like, that's not blocked off for me or anything at this point. Um, and exactly. I can't tell Lincoln, is there a gold passenger on the um, spot where Catherine's train is? If there is, one. there's one. Then go ahead, pick that up and, and for your second action, why don't you do a pickup and put that in your train? And that way you'll be able next turn you'll be able to go ahead and deliver that that uh, robot to the uh, perfect the station. all right so that's your turn it goes back to my turn and on my turn uh, i'm going to go a little crazy with the building of stations um at this point so i'm going to build some more track i'm going to build track from that silver station that you just put down off to the right to um i can't read what the title of it is it's in german i would say it wrong probably anyway that's one piece of track and my other piece of track i'm going to go from the a station where Catherine started down. So at one of the curves there, either any one of the curves will go. And perfect. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So that's building that. And I can build a station now at one of these other spots too. So I will choose, well, I'll let Lincoln choose again, any one of those uh, stations he'd like and pop that station down in one of those two spots that I've connected to. Wait, let's do it over here. Let's do it over here. Okay. Wow. Second thought. All right. Good. Um, the gold meeple or the the gold robot that was on that well, that one goes onto my player board, and again, you can choose the spot for it there, whatever you think is appropriate. Um, I know you're trying to get me that third action, which is very nice. Four. <clears throat> okay. That looks good. And those, that's a recess board. Again, hard to tell on the screen here, but that's a recess. So they fit in, in those uh, really nicely and they don't move around otherwise. So those are my two actions for my second turn. So it's back to you, Catherine. Uh, let's see. Let's uh, do a, a delivery, right? So yeah, yeah. So what you can piece. do now, you can use an action to move. So you have, oh, always start out with at least one of everything. So you can move one space. So you can move from where you are now up to that gold station that you, had, you connected to. That's one action. And then another action is to drop off that gold passenger, that gold robot right there at that station. You always drop off things at their own colors. And then that goes onto your player board, which you can then unlock something else. Uh -huh. Very, very close. New action. Third action. <laughs> um, it's just it's a little scary. Okay, then it's back to me. Um, we're going to continue going through this, and I don't want to go through all these things, but I think people get an idea now of kind of what the basic mechanisms are uh, of the game. Uh, one of the things that we're both want to do very soon is unlock the different passengers. Um, so the um, different passengers that are, again, pink, lilac, coral, and purple. Um, and I'll think it's showing my, my screen here too. It's probably very small for people, but uh, unlocking them, um, well, to get, to get to the right one here. Uh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Much better. Yay. <laughs> um, uh, if you go down, just move that up just a little bit, Lincoln, so we can see where it says unlock passengers and build stations. Um, if you fill in those columns there, so a silver and a copper robot will unlock pink, which means you can then build a pink station and you can deliver pink passengers. Um, then uh, after that, you can take one of those pink passengers that you have and you can put it in the bottom of the, the coral um, column and put another silver one above that. You can start building coral stations and delivering coral passengers. And the, the, the lighter color, the pink and the lilac passengers, they're worth one victory point for every one of those that you deliver. And that's, that's great. The other ones, the darker ones, the coral and purple, those are worth two victory points for everything you deliver. So the more of those passengers you deliver, the more victory points you're gonna get. That's a, the most basic way to get victory points throughout the game. Um, so you're gonna wanna do that. You're gonna wanna increase your other actions that are there um, you know, to just give you more flexibility to do different things. Um, there's also some other ways to score extra bonus points. So uh, in the upper right of your passenger of your board, now that Lincoln has moved it, I'll ask him to put it back there again. Uh, in the upper right, uh, you can see that there's there's a columns and like kind of a grid there. Each column there can give you an extra victory point for like pink or lilac or, or coral or purple. Or if you go across and you have one in, in each of those rows, you're gonna have an extra victory point for every track link you've built. So it doesn't matter how many pieces of track on there, but whenever you link two stations together, that's considered a link. And the more of those you have, the more points you're gonna get. And then below there, there's a section for bonus victory point cards. So we all start with four victory point cards. 
by um, default, you get to score your highest ones, whichever one it gives you different things like connect to two specific stations, or if you you know fill up certain areas of your passenger board, that sort of thing. There we go. That's one. So you get four points for every time you directly connect a gold to a purple station. Um, and so if that was your highest one, maybe you have three of those connections, that's worth 12 points, you would score that. Uh, your, your passenger um, or your player board also allows you to lock additional ones. So you can unlock additional cards that let you, it looks like those cards have like holes in them. That's really cool with those colors uh, that are there. That's <laughs> blue on blue, it's pretty great. It's just, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can unlock more cards and you can score more points that way. So a whole bunch of different ways to score points. You're gonna have, uh, you know, the, the cards kind of give you a slight direction to go um, on each game in terms of what you're gonna choose and, and how, to, how you're gonna shape your, your board. Um, you can continue to put track out, uh, as I mentioned before, on top of other people's tracks. So you're not really limited by what other track is there. Uh, the only thing you can't do, because this is a subway line, is you can't branch off in more than, than two, two directions from any station. So you'll see that a single line kind of travels its way all the way around the board in different ways. Uh, you can make a big loop if you want to. You just can't branch it off in three different directions um, because subways don't know what to do when that happens. So uh, that's one of the limitations that you have there. Um, but uh, yeah, and you can have, you'll have up to four players and you'll be able to see all those different tracks on, on top of each other. They, they uh, you know, kind of work really, really well on, you know, when they're, when you're uh, building them that way. So there's some comments about the, the design choices you've, you've made. Um, there's a comment from the chat about, um, uh, let's see what he wrote. Um, Olin Tim is a regular artist for Bezier. Um, do you see uh, his art evolving over time to tackle this much more te technological theme you're going with? Yeah, yeah. so um, Olin has done, uh, he's done art for us for, he's done the, the Castles of Mad King Ludwig cover with Stein Castle. He's done a colony, kind of a futuristic thing. And then of course he did the cover, which you kind of see back behind me here, the cover for this, as well as kind of the map design that's an overlay um, on the board itself. And uh, yeah, his, his art's just amazing. Um, you know, this is, he doesn't do this full time. He kind of does this part time. And as far as I know, I think he just works with me for board games, uh, but he's an actual, he's an architect. And uh, we originally hired him to do the isometric buildings for Suburbia. And uh, so the first edition of Suburbia with the isometric looking buildings was his art, but yet he's the same guy who's doing this cool um, art that you see on a lot of our covers too. So super, super talented guy. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's only getting better. Every time he, it's it's so rare that I have to give him notes of like, oh no, we don't want this, we want this. Um, he just kind of figures out the, the the feel of the game and puts something out there that's just stunning. Yeah, it's a, it's it's really, really nice. Um, they, they really stand out the design choices you guys have made with the game. Um, there are some questions also about language choices, like will, will there be, for example, like a German edition of the game since uh, Berlin is featured um, so or other languages of, as well? We did use the names of the German cities there. So yes, uh, it's in German on the Berlin side. Um, but no, we don't, we, right now the, there's only an English version. Um, we don't have any announced um, localizations at this point, though I know a lot of publishers um, are looking into it, but we don't have anything that's been announced by any of our partners at this point. Uh, what about solo mode? I mean, in these this day and age, oh, yeah, solo mode that's that's cool. There is solo mode. Um, you know, that's that's yeah, really nice right now. I mean, this this whole situation, obviously, with everyone, it's kind of irritating. Had we known this was still going to be an issue when the game came out later this year, we probably would have changed because right now we have the 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 subtitle on here it just says you know magnetic levitation rail, which you know it's explanatory but not that exciting. It probably would have been like you know this the most fun you can have on a subway without full PPC or something. Um, because, uh, you know, that's the, the, the sort of thing that we would, we would do on there. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Who knew, right? <laughs> can you, can you say a little bit about how the, the solo version works? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Solo version. Yes. I got, I got distracted by, um, when talking about the COVID <laughs> thing, but anyway, so you're stuck at home and you want to play it. Yeah. This works great as a solo game. What we have is it's, uh, you are trying to build. Um, not against a bot, but you're actually just trying to be super efficient. And that's a lot of what this game is. Anyone who likes an efficiency-based Euros 
um, is going to really enjoy this sort of thing because the solo mode, you are going kind of going against the clock because uh, every time you build or take take your uh, turn, you're going to be getting rid of a passenger from that bag and that bag is slowly de depleting. And of course, one of the actions you can take uh, during the game is to refill a station with passengers, which allow you, uh, allows you to pick those up and deliver them get points. But of course, by doing that, you're shortening the game. And so it's just makes some really interesting choices um, for that. And we've got this great fun scale of uh, you know what the your, your rankings are and the rules that goes through. And I think there's like 50 different um, you know categories that you may, depending on where your score falls, as to how you rate. Um, so we spent a lot of time on the solo mode and we tried to make it as simple as possible while still giving you kind of a, you know, a meaty solo experience. Definitely. With replayability, right? That's a Oh, important... absolutely. And of course, there's the, the cards I was mentioning before. There's a ton of those bonus cards um, and they, they're in different categories of things like, you know, filling up your player boards different ways, using track in different way, connecting different types of um and there's also another side. Right now, you're only seeing the Berlin side. The other side is Manhattan, and it changes the rules around just a little bit. Um, I was going to say, uh, flip the board over and keep the stuff on there would be really impressive, but uh, Lincoln is not quite as dexterous as I was hoping. Um, he just <laughs> tosses it straight up and then flips the board around and catches everything. That would be very impressive. Um, so on the, uh, the Manhattan side, there's also kind of a giant big station. So this, this is uh, what you see in Central Park. It's the hub. And uh, it has a special characteristic that it is all of those robot colors. So when you're delivering those robots, you can deliver all of them to this hub. And this hub lets you break that rule where you normally can have just one line that goes across. Lots of different spokes can come out from the hub. And that totally changes uh, gameplay quite a bit. Interesting. <clears throat> People are asking about uh, when this is available and where they can get a hold of it. So um, it's, it's later than we hoped. Um, I think part of it is we're doing all these special pieces, the transparent tiles, these very cool trains. So I'm still just playing around with this because it's super fun. Um, and uh, you know all the, the inset boards and everything that we're doing here. So it will probably not end up shipping until, um, be in stores until Q1. Although we're pretty hopeful that people who've pre-ordered directly from us, we're gonna get them out before Christmas. Um, not guaranteed yet because the boat hasn't quite hit the water, but it, we're, we're, we're feeling pretty good about that, that uh, you know, Pre-order should get out there before Christmas, and then shortly thereafter, it'll it'll start showing up in stores. What about digital versions of it, like for Tabletopia or or similar? Oh yes, uh, so we have it right now. It's on both Tabletop Simulator and Tabletopia. Um, it's free to play there. Um, we're going to be doing demos um, throughout um, Spiel Digital, so we have them. I think every three or four hours, and uh, people can play. You're, you're, it's it's the, the frustrating part of that. It's cool that people can do that, but the tactile experience of these wonderful little trains here, um, as well as the transparent tiles and everything else, uh, you kind of miss out on that. You don't really get that same effect. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, not, I mean, not as exciting as the actual physical game. So hopefully people will have a chance to play the physical game very, very soon. That is one of the reasons why we love, you know, board games versus digital games, right? Is is that it's the social aspect and it's the tactile aspect of it and those awesome, cool components that I would be playing with right now if uh, if I if I had them in front of I, me. I know. I feel bad <laughs> that you don't have one of these that you can go, oh, look at this. It's so nice and shiny and, and uh, you can put the passengers in and play with them and move them around and talk to them as they're traveling around. Not that I would do that, but right? maybe I have some. Yeah. You're making me jealous, um, so, Ted. Yeah, You're making all, me jealous. All the pieces. You've got those. You've got the the tiles. You know the the transparent tiles where you have like all of these different track tiles. I can get a couple here. Like you just keep like putting these on top of each other, and they all work like that on each player there. But it's really cool um, how that works, and it, they stack. And the recessed areas in the board. We've got these big giant um, stations. They're super thick, and they hold those track tiles in place uh, when they're put there, so they don't slide around the board. A lot of really, really cool stuff that we were able to do in terms of the physical aspects of the game. Fantastic. How long does a game take? Is it like a, an hour? Um, it'll or take, half uh, it, it depends on the number of players. You know, once you've played, it's uh, less than, it's about a half hour to 45 minutes for two players. And that goes up to, I'd say about 75 minutes for four players. Your first game will probably be about an hour and a half um, once you figure out uh, what's going on. But uh, it goes pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, with that, you saw our turns. You know, you're just taking two actions, and the next person takes two actions, whatever. Uh, it, it ends up going very, very quickly around the table. And, uh, you know, by the time you figure out what you want to do next, it's your turn. And that's that's kind of how I like 
at games like this where you're not just sitting there going, uh, I wish you just finished your turn, but you can think of things of what to do and then, hey, it's your turn again and you're ready to go. Fantastic. Well, uh, keep your eyes out for this. Uh, it looks fantastic, um, I must say. Um, I'm excited about getting my uh, my hands on it. Q1, hopefully, here in Norway. Um, yeah. That is uh, Maglev Metro from Bezier Games. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.